discover more about this new Jose on alongside Eugene, as he tries to reconcile his past and navigate the various forces that pique his curiosity. One certain curiosity leads him to the mysterious Dong Mei, and we learn how Dong Mei's past shaped him into a man of notoriety. Eshin and Eugene continue to straddle the line between friend and foe, trying to judge whether they can reveal all their cards. In the process, relationships are revealed, broken, and redefined to show each person's loyalties. Episode 3 Recap Directing the investigation of the assassination from the United States Embassy, Korean-American naval officer Eugene interrogates Er Shin, the renowned noble's granddaughter and resistance fighter, about the night of the shooting, which was perfectly covered up by the noise and crowd of the street lamp lighting. Er Shin continues to feign innocence, so Eugene approaches her and lifts his hand to cover the bottom half of her face. She follows suit, and they both think back to their masked face off on the night of the assassination. Without acknowledging their double identities, they both claim that the other looks familiar, the air of suspicion adding to the tension. Eugene asks to know who Er Shin really is, and she says that a foreigner has no business in knowing such information. She returns the question, asking if Eugene is part of the Walbindang, the infamous group of bandits who stole from the rich and gave to the poor, or the righteous army. He responds by asking, if I am a part of these groups, am I on your side? Er Shin pauses before resorting back to her innocent persona, who knows of nothing but paintings. She asks what he does as an American envoy, but he cuts her off and asserts that he's the one asking questions here. He then breaks the tension by dismissing Er Shin and looks frustrated by this futile interrogation. As he watches Er Shin leave in her carriage, Eugene asks his assistant Guan Su what her deal is, why does everyone know her and coddle her? Guan Su explains that Er Shin is the youngest granddaughter of the high-ranking Minister Go, so she's a noblewoman. Minister Go, or grandfather, was the king's teacher and an uncorrupt government official. He even opens his home once a year during the famine to feed the people. This is why the Jose on people know Er Shin and try to protect the pretty and the innocent noblewoman. Eugene glares at him, knowing that there's more behind this innocence, and looks triggered to see Guan Su covering half his face with his hand while thinking of her dreamily. Eugene slaps Guan Soo's hand away, leaving him perplexed. In her carriage, Er Shin reenacts her interaction with Eugene, but her thoughts are interrupted by the loud train passing by. Her maid comments on how the train and other Western-influenced businesses have been taking over Joseon's, and mention of candies entices Er Shin, so they decide to make a pit stop. Behind them, Er Shin's spiteful cousin sneaks by to make her way to the pawn shop, owned by our resourceful Il Shik and Chu Shik duo. Cousin needs money fast and asks to get the maximum amount for the jade ring she offers. Unfortunately, Il Shik declines the ring because her antics have been noticed by whoever she's stealing from. We're not quite sure what the situation is, but it seems like she's on the losing end of the whatever she's stuck in. Er Shin and her servants enjoy candies from the French bakery, and Auntie Jose on mercenary Dong Mei watches from afar in a tarot card shop. He looks sentimental as he thinks about his past, and he says, in Jose on, there are those who have to kneel on the ground to speak to commoners. They must also remain silent until spoken to. In Jose on, they called butchers. In a flashback, we see young Dong Mei kneeling on the ground beside his mother and shamefully lying prostrate as a woman threw a bucket of dirty water over them. His mother came to collect the money for the meats, but the commoner women refused and hit her. When young Dong Mei tried to protect his mother, he was pushed to the ground and assaulted along with his mother. Even while Dong Mei's mother was being abused and raped by a man in the adjacent shed, young Dong Mei yelled at his father for letting him be born as a butcher's son. His father persistently cut the meat, ignoring everything going on around him, and Dong Mei narrates, while a butcher's son held a knife, they could not cut anyone, so every day was hell. We see the deaths of Eugene's and Er Shin's mothers as Dong Mei continues, to save their children, mothers in Joseon kill themselves, get murdered, or abandon them. Young Dong Mei breathed heavily as his mother pointed a knife at him. Covered in blood, she demanded that he leave and never come back, as the life as a butcher's child is terrible. She threatened to kill him and swung her knife, leaving a cut on young Dong Mei's forehead. Indignant and in tears, Dong Mei yelled that he was leaving for good and ran off, leaving her.